Hey everybody, Max Kevin here. It's the Little Kitty Podcast. It's not too long. Zoro doesn't like it when I make that voice. He uh he looks at me. He looks at me pretty funny. And he tilts his head. He does the pug head tilt. He's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Don't make that noise. I'm a dog. High pitched noises make me crazy. Oh well, anyway, uh if you hear uh if you hear Zora snoring, uh, you know, he's uh sitting on my lap like a fat lazy fuck, you know, just like he always does. Oh, he's so lonely. I'm such a lonely little pug. I don't want to sit on my bed. I want to sit on your lap. Why won't you let me sit on you? I'm a little fat boy. I like sitting on people. Anyway, uh, uh, are you guys, I guess, are you, are you waiting? Are you waiting for me to talk about the UFC? UFC, what number is this? 295? What day is this? Two ni- uh, UFC 295, dude. UFC 295. It was supposed to be John Jones versus Stipe, but then John Jones hurt his tit. And Stipe was like, I don't want to fight the up and coming guys because they'll beat the shit out of me because I'm an old man. I don't want to, I only want to fight John Jones because, well, I don't, I don't know exactly why, but um, Anywho, uh, yeah, we got, we got a better fight, a better fight anyway, because I guess, I mean, yeah, John Jones is the champion there. And uh, Stipe Miocic uh, was the champion there, but you know he's he's an old man now, you know. So like I don't, no one really cares about that fight, you know. Everybody cares about Sergey Russian Nganu Pavlovich versus Tom Aspinall. Aspinall. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, as I said before, uh, in, a, in another podcast, you know, I think uh, I think the top three guys in the heavyweight division are Pavlovich, Aspinall, and uh, Almeida. But of course, uh, Almeida last week, you know, Almeida versus Lewis. Of course, he wrestled. He 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 did what's I'm, I'm gonna say a bad word. He did what's called wrestle fucking. He wrestle fucked Lewis for five rounds. But uh, you know, he didn't really do much once he got him. You know, he was in full mount, like twice. He was in full mount, and he still couldn't. He couldn't land it. He couldn't land any ground and pound. It's like, hey, dude, if you're in full mount, I mean, that's, I mean, the fight's pretty much over. Like, in, in any other fight, if you if you get full mount on some dude. It's over, dude. Fight's over, dude. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I don't think I don't. I mean, Almeida's wrestling is is very good, but uh, if he was against Tom Aspinall, Tom Aspinall's wrestling is also very good. Tom Aspinall's jujitsu is also very good. Tom Aspinall's striking is also very good. So I don't think I don't think Almeida, I don't think Almeida would be able to do that to either Pavlovich or Aspinall. He should probably just cut weight and go to two hundred five, and he could easily be champion. He could easily be champion at 205. I mean, he only has to cut, what, 25, 30 pounds, maybe? 25, 30 pounds? I mean, Alex Pereira, he cut more than that. He cut 40 pounds, going down to 185. I mean, uh, even, uh, even uh, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, 135, dude. 135, former champion. Uh, he lost to Sean O'Malley. Uh, I can't remember his name right now. can't remember his name right now. Funk Master. The Funk Master. Uh, what's his name? The Funk Matt. God, I'm, I'm certain. I'm, Aljamain Sterling. Aljamain Sterling. He cuts like 40 pounds. He cuts 40 pounds to, to go down to 135. He cuts from 175 to 135. And you're telling me Almeida, who's like 235, you can't cut 30 pounds, dude? Come on. Just cut 30 pounds. You'll easily be the 205 champion. I don't know what you're doing in heavyweight. You're, you're not gonna, you're probably not gonna be able to, Russell Fuck, Pavlovich, or Aspinall. You know, of course, uh, Pavlovich, I don't know if you've seen, he was uh, back in the day, back in, maybe maybe a couple years ago, he was training with the uh, with the Dagestani boys, you know, he was training with uh, Khabib, Khabib Nurmagomedov, and uh, Islam Makhachev, you know. So I don't know if he was uh, seriously trying, I mean, they're both, they can both, they can all speak Russian, you know, so. Uh, you know, he also said his wrestling is very good, but he never uses it because he knows the audience likes to watch him knock dudes out. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. His, his wrestling might be decent. You know, the only the only chance we had to uh, see that was against uh, Curtis Blades there. And Curtis Blades only went for the takedown, like, once. And it got stuffed, so then he was like, all right, I guess we'll swing him back. That was kind of dumb. He probably should have kept going for the takedown. Uh, kept going for the single leg. So, yeah, but maybe Pavlovich's wrestling is uh, is, is quite good, you know. Of course, Aspinall's, uh, Aspinall is probably the best uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner in the heavyweight division there uh so yeah i don't know i mean uh yeah the odds for this fight are, are uh they're even odds you know they're both uh both uh they're both uh minus 110 so it's basically 
basically even odds. It's a toss up. You know, I think, you know, Pavlovich, he's, he's got the hype, you know, because he just knocks dudes out in the first round. You know, I don't think he's ever, his only, his only time he's been out of the first round was his loss, I think. Uh, Aspinall also, uh, Aspinall is also a first round finisher. So I, I, uh, of course I bet the under, I bet the under round and a half. Cause both these guys, uh, both these guys, uh, like to finish in the first round there. So, uh, yeah, I think that fight is going to be a lot closer than some people. Oh, I guess the odds, I mean, the odds makers realize it's going to be closer because Tom Aspinall, man, he's, he's pretty good. He's like uh Cyril Gaon. He's like Cyril Gaon who can also wrestle. So he's very quick. You know he's uh, his his uh, he's not one dimensional striking. You know he uh, does he does punches and kicks. And uh, but yeah, I don't know. Pavlov just got so much power, dude. He just knocks dudes out. He's Russian Ganu. He just knocks dudes out. So yeah, I could see I could see Aspinall like uh, moving around. You know, like yeah, Curtis Blades was landing. He was landing some shots. Sergey Pavlovich, but he just didn't have enough power. You know. And Aspinall, I think he probably has the same amount of power as Curtis Blades. But uh, he's probably got a little bit better fight IQ there, you know. So I can see him landing some shots, you know, maybe uh, piecing him up, piecing up Pavlovich if Pavlovich is too slow. But Pavlovich, oh man, Pavlovich is quite fast. He's a great boxer, you know. He's quite fast boxer there. And his jab, too. I would not want to get jabbed in the face by Pavlovich. Holy guacamole, dude. So, um,. Yeah, I think uh, I think Aspinall probably has more more striking uh, tools. You know, he likes he kicks. Pavlovich doesn't really kick so much, so I wonder. You know, I wonder if uh, I think uh, I think the smart thing for Aspinall to do would just do, uh, do leg kicks, do lots of leg kicks, and um, keep the distance. You know, keep the distance, do lots of leg kicks. Uh, maybe if he sees the leg, if he if he sees the leg is injured, you know, do the wrestling. Maybe do a submission. I could easily, I could see Tom Aspinall doing a submission there, you know, because that's Sergey Pavlovich's one loss was a submission loss to uh, to uh, to uh, Alistair Overeems to Alistair Overeems. So uh, I think this is going to be a very close fight. I mean, it'll be, uh, or it won't, or Pavlovich will just go out there and just knock him out one punch and be like, "Jujitsu is a real good douche. Eat my Russian Ngannou fist." Uh, yeah, but anyway, I bet the uh, I bet the under I bet the under round and a half, and I also put ten bucks on Pavlovich because I think uh, I think he's gonna knock Tom Aspinall out. Unfortunately, but who knows? I think these guys are the real the real top two. They're the real top two, so it's good it's good we're seeing their uh, heavyweight fight there because these guys are the best. I think they're the definitely two best in the heavyweight division. And then of course we got Jerry Prochatska versus Alex Pereira. Um, yeah, of course this fight, uh, you know. Uh, Jerry Prochatska is his first time coming back after injuring, injuring his shoulder. And then, uh, Alex Pereira, you know, he's, uh, this is his second fight at light heavyweight. You know, I don't think he, I don't think he looked that good against, uh, Jan Blachowicz, Polish power. You know, he, he did win that fight, but I thought it was very close. I thought it could have gone either way. It's, you know, he, uh, Pereira's, uh, his power just, uh, is not as much, you know, at, uh, 205 as it was at 185. He's... Of course, you know, because he's because he's not as big. You know, the other guys are almost as big as him. So, um, you know, of course, he's got the striking advantage there. Of course, GD Parchatska, his defense is shit. His defense is quite bad. You know, he likes to um, uh, not faint, but sort of like taunt. Not not even taunt, but he just he kind of goes reckless to try to make his opponents throw. You know, like he he always like he always like lean in. He always leans in to try to get his opponent to throw there, you know, so, so then he can counter, but, you know, sometimes when he leans in, he just gets punched in the face there, you know, like when he was fighting Glover Teixeira, you know, he's like, all right, Glover, I'm going to, I'm going to bait you into, I'm going to bait you into throwing a punch, and then I'm going to counter, but then, you know, he just got hit in the face, so, I don't know, I feel like Pereira's, Pereira's a better striker than uh, Glover Teixeira there, but, of course, Jiri Prochatska, you know, he's also, he's also a well-rounded, well-rounded fighter, you know, he submitted he submitted Glover Teixeira, the best uh, BJJ guy, you know, so I wonder in that fight if he was, like, sort of testing himself, you know, he's got that samurai spirit, you know, so he wanted to, uh, he wanted to uh, test himself, but I don't know, he was, he was losing that fight until he uh, got submitted there, so, uh, so I don't know, I can see, I can see Pereira knocking him out, I could, I could easily see Pereira knocking him out, but if Deary fights smart, he'll just wrestle and get a submission, 
But I don't know if Giri's going to fight smart or not, you know? Because he's got that warrior spirit. He's got that samurai spirit. I'm a samurai, so I gotta test my I I gotta test my Bushido. It's like I don't know, maybe you should test not getting hit in the face so much. That's you should probably. CTE is real, kids. I've said it before, CTE is real. Anyway, I put ten bucks on Judy Brutska. Just because I think he's a better all around fighter. But uh I don't know, dude. I feel like Alex Butter could easily knock him out. I could easily knock him out, but uh Yeah, I don't know. I mean, um Pedetta definitely has less. He has less power at uh, 205. But uh, Chidi Prochats, guys, is it, has he ever been knocked out? I don't know. Got that war he had with that war he had with Glover to share, man. That that had to take years off his life, there, man. Holy guacamole, dude! Holy guacamole, dude! Let's see. Yeah, he pretty much knocks dudes out. He knocks dudes out. Knocked out Dominic Reyes, knocked out Ozdemir, knocked out Dalloway, knocked out all these dudes. His three, his last loss, yeah, it was a knock, was to knock out, but that was uh, eight years ago. He hasn't lost for eight years. Yeah, his only losses are like early in his career there, you know, ten years ago, eight years ago. Since then, he's just been knocking dudes out. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, I think Prochatska is a better all-around fighter. Uh, so he'll probably take that. And he's got the age advantage, too. You know, Pedetta's 36. So. He's got the age advantage. So I put 10 bucks on him. I also put, uh, what did I do? I did 10 bucks on Pavlovich, 10 bucks on Prochatska, 10 bucks on under, round and a half. And then, oh yeah, I put 10 bucks on Diego Lopez. Diego Lopez, featherweight fighter versus Pat Sabatini. Of course, Diego Lopez is an up, up and coming guy. He's uh, quite good. His jiu-jitsu is quite good. And featherweight guys, there's not... Uh, I'm trying to think. There's not many. In the featherweight division, there aren't really any jiu-jitsu guys. So I think maybe he could, de- he could definitely... Uh, well, yeah, except for... Um, what's his name? Brian Ortega. He's up there. His jiu-jitsu is up there with Brian Ortega. So, and, you know, Ortega got quite far in the featherweight division just using his jiu-jitsu. So. There's another one I wanted to bet on. It was Matt Favela versus Benoit Saint-Denis. Uh, of course, Matt Favela, he's been uh, knocking dudes out recently. He just knocked out Drew Dober. So the other fight before that, he knocked out I mean, as it as Zaitar. Before that, he knocked out General Valdez. You know, so uh, yeah, he was like plus two hundred there. So I think maybe that could be a decent bet. Benoit Saint Denis, twenty seven, has really knocked out Tiago Moises. He submitted Is Ismail Bonafim. He knocked out some, yeah, I guess, I guess he is quite good there. You know, knockout submission. Of course, he did, he did lose a decision to Ilizu Zaleski Dos Santos, who I don't know, who, I don't think that guy's in the UFC anymore. I don't know, maybe he is. Okay, he fought, he fought last month. Or he fought last week, actually, to a draw. With Renat, Renat Fakret Dinov. Uh... Was I talking about? Uh, I don't even remember. I don't even remember Pat Sabatini. No, that was someone else. Oh, oh yeah. Um, Matt Favela. Yeah, Matt Favela is uh, plus two hundred there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anything else? In the fights. Of course, we have Jessica Azraj. Fighting Mackenzie Dern there. She all, she was also plus 200. But uh, I don't know, man. Andrade, either, she either destroys or she gets destroyed. She either destroys or she gets destroyed. There's no in-between. Except for her second fight with Rose Namajunas. That was the that, that decision. That was kind of an even fight there. But besides that fight, she either destroys or gets destroyed. And uh, yeah, Mackenzie Dern... The last fight was against Angela Hill. It's quite bad. She lost a, she lost a Yan Shaolan, but of course Yan Shaolan knocked out, uh, knocked out. Uh, and Mackenzie Dern's kind of hot, actually. What's up, baby? What are you doing later? You want to ground and pound me? Uh, 
Don't ever say that to a girl in the bar. I don't think that's a good pickup line. If any straight boys are out there listening to the podcast, any single straight boys are out there listening to the podcast, don't go up to girls in the bar and be like, what's up, baby? You want to ground and bound me? I don't think that I don't think that'll work. Especially here in Japan, because they don't know what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, we got an old man fight on the early prelims. We've got Jared Gordon versus Mark Madsen. Mark Madsen is 39 years old, but he's 12 and 1. It's like, hey, dude, how how can you be 39 years old but only have so such few fights? How come? How come you don't have so many fights, but you're 39 years old? You're 39. You only started fighting what four years ago? This guy started. He started his MMA career at 35. It's like, hey, man, well, 10 years too late there. Well, 10 years too late there. Oh, anyway, uh, yeah, I think I already, already told my bets, huh? I already told my bets. I guess we'll see what happens, Larry. We'll see what happens, Larry. We got two great fights. Two awesome fights tomorrow. And we got some other decent fights. Diego Lopez should be a good, good fight. Lupita. Uh, oh, yeah, we got another Mateus. Mateus Rebiki. Man, this guy's... Yeah, okay, I was looking at that one. Mateus Rabiki versus Roosevelt Roberts. This guy, Roosevelt Roberts, he's got like a 18 centimeter reach advantage. That's like, what, 5 inch? He's got like a 5 inch reach advantage. But I think he's, and he's like a plus 500. He's a plus 500 underdog. Even though he's got a 5 inch reach advantage, that means he must suck. He must suck balls if you're a plus 500 underdog with a 5 inch reach advantage. Oh. Anyway, what are you barking at, Zoro? What are you barking at, Zoro? Zoro, who do you think is going to win tomorrow? You got any predictions? What? You just... Oh, you want to take a dump on the street again? Okay. Yeah, we got this one uh, This one neighbor. She also has a dog there, you know? So we meet her dog sometimes. Dog's name is Raja. And uh, Zoro likes to poop in front of her house. That's his favorite pooping spot, right in front of his boy's... His, his, his friend, Raja. It's like, oh, this is where Raja lives. I'm going to take a big dump right in front of his house so he can he can smell me. So he never forgets me. It's like, Raja, don't you miss me? You can smell my big dumps in front of your house. But then, of course, I pick up his poop and then I throw it away. So there's only a slight scent. But, uh, you know, I think Raja knows. Raja knows who's been taking dumps in front of his house. He knows. He knows. Oh, anyway, thanks for listening. Maybe we'll see you tomorrow.